Welcome to the lecture on role of Tundis in continuous casting. So, in the last lecture we talked about the introduction about the continuous casting process and uh, we discussed about the various components of the continuous casting process which starts from uh, the ladle, then you come to Tundis, then further you are going to the mold. So, you have strand portion. Now, uh, we are uh, going to have the introduction about uh, the uh, role of the Tundis in uh, continuous casting process. So, as you know that uh, Tundis is uh, between the uh, ladle and the uh, mold. So, it is an intermediate vessel uh, to transfer the finished steel melt from a ladle to the mold in a, a continuous casting uh, machine. So, its job is uh, you know that it receives the liquid metal from the ladle and it has to supply the liquid metal uh, to the mold. So, it is an intermediate vessel between the ladle and the mold. Normally, it is a rectangular big end up uh, refractory lined vessel which may have a refractory lined lid on the top also. So, if you talk about a typical uh, tundis, so it is a normally refractory uh, lined and rectangular type of uh, uh, you know vessel and on the sides so, uh, you have uh, the refractory lining because uh, uh, you know the steel molten steel is going into it and uh, certainly it is a metallic structure because it, it has to have the rigidity. Uh, but then uh, you will have to have the refractory lining because for sustaining that much high temperature refractory lining is uh, required. Uh, this refractory lining uh, will uh, be basically lost after certain use. So, again you have to put the um, lining or relining is to be done at certain intervals. And uh, also many a times uh, we may have the refractory lined lid also on the top because from the top you have uh, the uh, transfer of heat to the surroundings. So, many a times we also give uh, the uh, refractory lined uh, you know lid or a cover uh, on the top of the tundis. So, this way uh, your uh, tundis is uh, designed. Tundis bottom has uh, one or more nozzle ports with uh, slide gates or stopper rods for controlling the metal flow. So, uh, you have the liquid metal going into the tundis uh, from the uh, you know ladle, but after that uh, you know this uh, liquid metal will be flowing out of the uh, tundis and going into the mold. So, you may have one or more nozzle port with uh, slide gates or stopper rods for controlling the metal flow. Now, the thing is that uh, uh, you know uh, when the there is a outlet portion of at the outlet portion of the um, uh, tundis you will have from that portion you will have metal coming out. Now, the thing is that uh, uh, when uh, you have a particular uh, bath height in the tundis of the liquid metal you will have a particular velocity. As this uh, bath height uh, uh, goes on decreasing as the liquid metal is uh, teamed from the tundis and it is uh, discharged from the tundis to the mold then uh, depending upon the bath height or the metal head the velocity also may uh, change velocity will decrease if that level comes down. So, uh, for you know controlling that metal flow, uh, you have the provision of uh, uh, you know slide gate or stopper rods. So, if you use those rods, you can increase or decrease the metal flow you know uh, from that nozzle into the mold. So, that is basically to ensure that there is constant amount of liquid metal which is supplied to the uh, you know mold. So, for ensuring that uh, uh, you have uh, these uh, you know uh, nozzle ports uh, which are uh, you know provided with uh, these slide gates or stopper rods in the uh, tundis. So, the raw job of tundis is also to have basically the uh, uniform distribution of uh, uh, you know uh, liquid metal. So, that will be ensured because of the uh, outlets being at the same level and also 
uh, uniform flow rate through the uh, you know nozzle and for that you will have the, the use of these uh, slide gears or stopper rods. So, a uh, typically if you look at the schematic of these uh, tundis as we discussed it will be looking like this that uh, you have this is the, this is the ladle uh, which will be bringing the liquid steel uh, you know from wherever steel has melted and you will may have the uh, you know treatment inside the ladle also. Then this is the ladle shroud. So, this uh, liquid metal through the shroud it will be coming and it will be going into the you know tundis. So, this shroud uh, this is known as shroud immersion. Basically, uh, this we do it to ensure that there is no you know direct contact of uh, atmospheric uh, you know gases with these uh, steel which is coming out. So, there may be chances of uh, having a certain kind of oxidation or uh, accordingly you may have the formation of inclusion particles in that case when you have the uh, direct contact of uh, these steel. So, um, uh, that will be uh, falling into the uh, tundis. Now, once it comes there, so uh, as you see this is a impact plate or you have a impact pad. Now, what happens that uh, since it is uh, falling and there is a ferrous metal being of very high specific gravity and velocity also. So, it is likely to erode at a very fast rate at these positions. So, what you do is normally in the tundis you provide uh, there is a impact plate. Uh, so, that will uh, reduce the you know erosion uh, from these uh, uh, places. Now, uh, what is happening is uh, you may have uh, the uh, you know now this is your uh, tundis lining. So, this uh, on these sides what you see the yellow structure part now here also. So, these things are the refractory lining on all the sides. So, uh, the liquid metal which will be coming it will not be in touch with this uh, uh, the, the metallic frame because that will be melted uh, you know in a very less time. So, uh, you know this uh, refractory lining is done and uh, you know uh, when the tundis uh, uh, lining is seem to be over then you have to remove the lining you have to put the fresh lining. So, that is a continuous process which is uh, uh, going in the case of uh, you know tundis. Then uh, you have apart from that uh, you have uh, also uh, what happens that you have uh, uh, many flow modifiers in that. So, the flow modifiers are in the shape of the uh, wear, uh, wear is something which will be coming from the top and the dam will be something which will be coming from the uh, bottom. So, these are basically the flow modifiers uh, or uh, you know they are used basically to alter the fluid flow inside the tundis. Now, we will talk about the role of flow modifiers. One of the role also is to have proper you know fluid flow uh, inside the tundis to ensure many things and uh, among them uh, the important things are like uh, you should have proper homogenization of the temperature inside the uh, whole tundis. So, uh, for that uh, you know you use these uh, uh, flow modifiers because in, uh, in otherwise uh, if the metal will go so it will go towards the uh, bottom directed flow will be there. So, may be that uh, the flow uh, uh, you will may have stagnant regions in certain uh, uh, region of the uh, tundis and, and that for the dead volume. So, that effectively reduces the um, volume of the uh, effective volume of the tundis and basically that will also reduce uh, lead to the, the uh, cold you know regions which will be uh, further detrimental as regards the productivity of the tundis is concerned. So, you have uh, many kind of flow modifiers are there inside the tundis and among them you have wear which is from the top and you have the dam which is placed on the bottom side and it will be going. Then you have the use of baffles also. So, you will have the holes uh, you know. So, through that the metal will pass. So, these are the uh, flow modifiers which are uh, used inside the uh, tundis. Then uh, you may have the use of turbo stop also which is normally used in the case of uh, tundis. So, these turbo stops are there just at the point where the uh, you know there is heating of the uh, you know uh, liquid stream metal stream 
uh, on the tundis bottom. So, that way uh, you have the surface entry nozzle which will be going and going into the mold. So, that way uh, you have uh, these uh, are the different type of uh, you know components in a uh, typical tundis. Uh, so, as we discussed that uh, you will have the various flow control devices like dams, wares, baffles with holes which will be arranged along the uh, length of the tundis and uh, they are uh, basically uh, uh, controlling the flow inside the tundis and uh, uh, you know you can understand it by uh, you know process like if suppose you have a tundis. So, if the liquid metal will come, so liquid metal will come and it will heat and, and then it will it may go like this. So, that may be you know and then so in those regions or larger portions you may have certain regions where uh, there is not much of the circulation of the hot metal. So, that may lead to the dead regions. So, what you do is if you apply uh, you know these uh, uh, you know so once it hits the liquid metal here and if you apply a um, dam. So, suppose the metal goes and then it goes like this. So, it may go into this region. So, this region otherwise which was uh, uh, you know uh, dead which was not um, very active that becomes active because of these flow modifiers. So, normally we use these uh, flow modifiers we use also the wares from the top or we use the uh, you know uh, turbo stop is there at the this place itself. So, um, the metal will go and move in, in this fashion. So, this is how the, the different type of flow modifiers are uh, used inside the uh, tundis. The tundis in, is intended to deliver the molten metal to the mold evenly and at a design throughput rate and temperature without causing contamination by inclusion. So, as we were discussing that uh, this is the uh, prime role of the tundis that uh, you know it should uh, deliver the liquid metal to the molds uh, evenly. So, uh, the, the metal should go equally from all the uh, you know uh, outlets of the tundis uh, into the mold because all the molds are synchronized and they will be oscillating at uh, accordingly and then uh, you will have the dimensions also normally equal of all the those um, you know. So, accordingly you can have the variation if, if, if required so, but otherwise they are all of equal dimensions. So, what you need to do is you need to uh, uh, ensure that uh, you are getting uh, even uh, you know at, at even rate these molten metal to all the molds at a design rate uh, uh, throughput rate. And also we en should ensure that the uh, temperature should be you know uniform. So, inside the uh, you know tundis the, there should not be uh, much of the temperature drop uh, you know at, at two places. So, there should I mean that may lead to other kind of uh, you know flow inside the tundis and uh, if there is a large temperature drop that is uh, uh, that may lead to solidification in certain regions and that will be uh, affecting the uh, the space which we, you are going to use that will affecting the uh, you know uh, the utility or the, the productivity uh, you know as far as the tundis utilization is concerned. So, uh, and also another important uh, thing is the uh, contamination of inclusions. So, you will have to do something so that the inclusions uh, contamination is uh, that chance is reduced. So, uh, this is one of the prime role of the tundis also that it will try to remove the inclusions. Inclusion may come into the tundis or it may be generated inside the tundis. Now, uh, the tundis is normally flat, it has a large surface area and the flow has to be such by the use of these uh, uh, even sometimes the use of flow modifiers or may you may have the design of the tundis in such a manner that uh, uh, the contamination by the inclusions is uh, minimum. The inclusions which are going inside the tundis if any uh, you, uh, they must have the tendency to float to go uh, towards the top surface uh, where they will be uh, you know uh, they will be uh, there at the top and from uh, in the end you can remove them. So, uh, that is uh, one of the uh, you know uh, prime you know requirement when we use the tundis. 
number of molds uh, may be varying one or two it may be there for the slab caster two to four for the uh, bloom caster and maybe four to eight for even the billet caster. So, normally when you have uh, the uh, uh, two uh, molds uh, attached it will be calling a twin slab caster we have 2 to 4, so 4 strand or 4 to 8, so 4 strand or 6 strand or 8 strand uh, billet caster. So, this is normally uh, the terminology which we use so when we talk about the continuous casting unit in which the tundis outlet uh, is uh, attached to the uh, mold. The melt delivery rate in into the mold is held constant by keeping the melt depth in the tundis constant. So, that is what we discussed that we will have uh, to keep in mind that the uh, melt delivery rate uh, should be constant otherwise uh, it may uh, lead into the uh, you know sometimes the overflowing from the mold or maybe uh, you, your mold becomes dry and the continuous supply is uh, gone. So, uh, so that may lead to enormous numerous kind of uh, defects. So, uh, you will have to have uh, you know uh, and for that as you know that you have uh, the slide gates or you have the stopper rods available. So, that uh, and uh, to the maximum possible you should try to see that the uh, you know uh, the, the surface uh, free surface uh, level height is uh, nearly constant in that case. Uh, if there is no clogging or so, in that case uh, you know it will always be uh, you know the, the equal delivery rate will be uh, maintained. Any additional delivery rate is uh, exerted by the slide gates or stopper rods placed at the exit ports of the outlet compartment. We have already discussed that uh, you can have the use of the slide gates or stopper rods if you feel ever to increase or decrease the uh, delivery rate you want to control the delivery rate in those cases. Tundis acts as a reservoir during the lateral change periods and continues to supply steel melt to the mold when coming uh, incoming melt is stopped making sequential casting by a number of uh, ladles possible. Now, this is where the main role of the uh, Tundis is that it is making the possibility of the uh, sequential casting as we call it as a continuous casting. So, it is because of the tundis that your continuous uh, flowing is uh, uh, flowing of the liquid metal to the mold is ascertained. So, as you know that the ladle will be receiving the uh, liquid metal uh, uh, from uh, the uh, melting uh, units and then it will be coming up. So, uh, so ladle uh, will be pouring the liquid metal into the you know tundis. Now, once ladle finishes its uh, uh, liquid metal, now in that case uh, uh, this uh, there will be discontinuity. So, at, at that particular time there is no uh, you know supply of liquid metal to the tundis, but in between the even if there is no ladle which is uh, supplying the liquid metal to tundis, tundis is, is, is still delivering the liquid metal into the um, you know mold. So, basically that makes this process a continuous process and uh, because of that only you are calling it as a continuous casting process because otherwise uh, you will have to uh, stop the process there is no continuous uh, formation you have to further restart the process and restarting takes uh, you know uh, a lot of time and uh, resources. So, and uh, it is not very easy you know it uh, certainly it is not impossible, but then uh, it will lead to the uh, decrease of the in the productivity of the unit. So, uh, basically uh, you know uh, you, so that is basically known as the ladle changeover. So, when you have the uh, uh, replacement of ladle one ladle will go and another ladle will come. So, that process is known as the ladle changeover. So, during the ladle changeover process also the uh, tundis is uh, uh, you know uh, becoming very very uh, you know effective in ensuring that uh, the there is a sequential casting uh, possible the, the power casting still goes on even if there is uh, no supply of the uh, liquid metal. So, that is uh, basically the main purpose of uh, one of the main purpose of the tundis. 
The main causes for inclusion formation and contamination of the melt include reoxidation of the melt by air and carried over uh, oxidizing uh, ladle slag, entrainment of tundis uh, and ladle slag and emulsification of these slags into the mold into the melt. So, uh, what uh, we mean by uh, this point is that what happens that there is large amount of chances of uh, the contamination of the melt uh, you know and uh, you will have uh, to do something uh, you know so that these uh, you know uh, um, contaminations or these in, uh, inclusions so that may be uh, you know by uh, the uh, there may be reoxidation uh, of the melt by the air or uh, there may be uh, you know uh, tundish and ladle slag entrainment is there. So, there are many possibilities by which you may have the formation of inclusions you may have uh, deoxidation uh, products or you have the reoxidation many a times you have the erosion of uh, uh, you know the, uh, uh, the, the refractory linings or something is coming from there or something is inside formed also. So, the inclusions may be formed because in the melt itself. So, you have uh, you know exogenous and indigenous type of uh, uh, inclusions which are formed. So, uh, these uh, you know so the, this is the role of the tundis in that cases to ensure that uh, uh, your uh, these inclusions are basically uh, not going further into the mold because the uh, tundis is the last reservoir uh, from where I mean uh, after that if the uh, metal uh, I mean uh, if the liquid metal is carrying any kind of uh, inclusion into the mold then the situation becomes more severe because in the tundis since being a you know uh, uh, component of very large surface area free surface area. And, and large vessel. So, you have the chance of having a quiescent type of flow in such a case uh, you have the chance that the, uh, uh, the inclusions will uh, uh, be uh, settling and going towards the up because inclusions are normally lighter. So, uh, although there are chances that they may go uh, you know along with the melt to the mold also, but there are chances if the proper flow is maintained in that case it will uh, be floating towards the top and then you can further remove these uh, things from there. So, basically uh, one of the main reason is one of the main uh, you know uh, function of this uh, tundis is that uh, uh, you know these uh, inclusions which are uh, there now these inclusions uh, uh, should uh, you know be uh, separated at that stage itself because once it goes into the mold then there are more likelihood of the final product having inclusions and then you will have the rejections of uh, uh, the end product. So, this is the last reservoir where any kind of uh, you know uh, uh, you, you, you where you can afford to have any kind of inclusion and you can do something so that these inclusions can further you know uh, be floated. So, these inclusions should be float out of the melt during its flow through the tundis before being teamed into the mold because if it goes further into the mold then uh, you know that will be uh, the degre degradation of the quality of the liquid steel melt and in many cases it can even be uh, you know rejected. So, that uh, uh, further you know that will lead to the loss uh, or, or the decrease of the productivity of the uh, steel maker. So, so that way uh, you know uh, you know this uh, this is the usefulness of this. Uh, so, you have to design this uh, tundis in such a manner that uh, the inclusions if there are any uh, the flow control should be such that if there are any inclusion they should come and float up and uh, most of them should be uh, going at the top where there will be slag layer. So, they will be captured by them and then uh, you have uh, the uh, you know you have a the clean steel uh, which is uh, going in the into the mold and uh, very less chances will be there to have these inclusions further into your final product. So, that is uh, one of the uh, major you know uh, uh, function of the uh, tundis. 
when uh, lateral metallurgy example the lateral furnace that is LF which was not earlier fully developed. So, earlier you had the lateral metallurgy or lateral furnace which was not developed you have a lateral simply it will be bringing and then it will be uh, pouring the um, uh, liquid metal into the um, uh, turn disc, but uh, when it was uh, not there there is no um, uh, lateral furnace lateral metallurgy was not there. In those cases the turn disc uh, uh, role was even more critical. In that case uh, turn disc was also expected to function as a refiner of the deoxidized melt uh, transferred from the ladle where inclusions are not fully removed. So, as we discussed that uh, nowadays you have ladle metallurgy which is coming into picture you have the heating arrangement and then you have the uh, many kind of uh, uh, methods like uh, you have blowing and all that by which you try to ensure that uh, there is uh, uh, removal of the inclusions there is uh, making of uh, clean steel uh, into the turn disc. But earlier when this was not the practice uh, in those cases uh, you know uh, the turn disc role was more critical. So, its job was uh, also as the refiner of the deoxidized melt. Uh, so, it was uh, you know uh, so whatever uh, is coming from the ladle or whatever inclusions are coming from the ladle uh, that time uh, the turn disc had the additional responsibility of uh, further you know uh, removing those inclusions. So, uh, you know uh, the, the you are ensuring that it should be uh, removed fully. Uh, without the lateral uh, furnace processing the deoxidized melt had macro inclusions and a large number of micro inclusions of indigenous origin which will be formed inside and that can agglomerate. So, that also happens that you have many small inclusions macro based uh, indigenous inclusions and uh, they will be they have the tendency to agglomerate to you know they have the tendency to segregate and they will be forming the macro inclusions uh, you know uh, during that uh, melt transfer and then uh, that will be uh, further you know detrimental because uh, that will try to have uh, the uh, uh, to go into the melt and they will try to decrease the quality of the uh, product. So, uh, so basically what we uh, mean to say that uh, uh, you know we discussed that uh, you there are different roles of the uh, turn disc one is that uh, you have to control the uh, you know uh, the different aspects. So, if you look at the uh, uh, turn disc aspects so one will be that it will be transferring the liquid metal then proper you know uh, flow of metal and then uh, removal of inclusions in this case you need to ascertain that you have uh, uh, constant delivery constant uh, you know rate of uh, uh, metal delivery. Also uh, what happens that uh, we will be discussing about uh, this that when we uh, have the ladle change over in those cases also you have the different grades being cast. So, there are many aspects which uh, uh, need to be looked into uh, proper flow of metal which is uh, important because uh, you know uh, many a times uh, what we see that the, the temperature homogenization is not there. So, at one point temperature is less or so that may lead to uh, you know uh, some other uh, you know kind of uh, flow configuration and uh, so proper flow uh, configuration should be there inside uh, which should see that there is chemical homogeneity inside there is proper temperature homogenization uh, inside the uh, you know turn disc. So, uh, this uh, for proper flow you we use the uh, flow modifiers and then uh, for the removal of inclusions also again the here also we try to have the uh, use of flow modifiers or so, but uh, you know uh, in some cases uh, you feel that there should be proper you know mixing of liquid metal you know so that uh, there is when especially in the case of ladle changeover the temperature may be different of the uh, uh, liquid steel which is coming from the two ladles. So, in those cases it should uh, uniform uh, quickly 
and uh, in case of uh, inclusion removal we feel that the flow should be such that uh, there should not be uh, you know uh, uh, more of the uh, mixing kind of thing. So, there should be a quiescent type of flow or a flow which is uh, you know which should allow the uh, inclusions to float up. So, uh, you know so we use the different kinds of flow modifiers and ultimately depending upon what we need basically uh, we try to uh, see that uh, you know the aim with which this uh, tendency is used it is uh, basically uh, met. So, all these uh, uh, things are required to be uh, kept in mind. So, with what uh, you know uh, earlier when we had uh, you know the uh, tundis and when we used to have the uh, ladle change over. So, many a times uh, what we used to do is that uh, we uh, require to stop the caster because there, there is another grade of steel which is coming out uh, into the tundis. So, we uh, thought of or we were going till the last you know level. So, level we are decreasing and then next ladder will be going. This is happening when you have uh, the grades of steel are changing. So, uh, so in those cases it becomes uh, you know uh, to understand it is uh, it is also you know important to see that when you have the different uh, grades of steel coming up how you know the grade which is going inside how they are going to have a proper mixing in quickly. So, that uh, has bearing on the quality of steel which is coming out. So, uh, so uh, and also many a times we feel that the steel which is uh, coming uh, from the next ladle. So, it should be uh, pushing off the, uh, the existing steel into the liquid and then it should have the uh, tendency to come out of the liquid. So, uh, so these are the uh, you know uh, depending upon that. So, Tundis has several roles it is very important part of this uh, continuous casting and it is uh, one must say that it is one of the most important part of this uh, continuous casting unit and you must have the proper knowledge of the uh, technology which is there it because of the Tundis that is known as Tundis technology and uh, what way it is affecting the overall quality overall uh, you know uh, uh, cleanliness uh, of the steel uh, by uh, you know uh, properly you know managing the uh, fluid flow inside uh, the uh, tundis uh, you know and uh, also ensuring that uh, the uh, melt quality or melt temperature is uniform altogether all this. So, this is about the uh, you know role of tundis in continuous casting we will be talking uh, more on the uh, you know tundis uh, in our uh, coming lectures. Thank you very much.